tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James. Hi. Hi. How are you? Here's what I like about doing these Friday afternoon shows that air on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. EST around the globe is that the week is kind of shook out. Right. right? At this point, the only thing that you, you kind of have to look forward to over the weekends is sports. Right. Because it's been a heavy politic week this sure. week. Sure. And uh, on a Friday afternoon, I don't know, what time is it? Two, three o'clock in the afternoon at this point. Uh, nothing has gone on, which, which is surprising to me. Uh, no new developments, I guess. I mean, the whistleblower uh, testified. He did, but it's like, again, I, here's the weird part about all of this, right? Is this is a massive story, 48 hours in your face. F you, F you, F you. And then, boom, the stock market's up again today. Nobody said a word about it. And you're just kind of like business as usual. Right. Which is strange because are we just now conditioned as a nation that it's like, hey, man, everybody, everything's going to be up in arms probably about two days out of the week with yeah. something politically. And then everybody's going to be like, ah, I really don't give a shit. Yeah, basically. Um, I've been getting a million messages about our Alex Jones episode. And then... Uh, you know, that was massive episode last week and everybody was like, man, surprisingly, he was a very thoughtful dude and it was a great interview and everything yeah, else. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and it was awesome. And then boom, Friday afternoon hits and I get a message on like, uh, Instagram that just says, uh, Hey man, I love the Alex Jones show, but you know, you and Dan on drinking bros sports can go fuck yourselves on this other thing. And I was like, ah. All right, cool. So we're done with the yeah, 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 the yeah. politics thing yeah, yeah, already. Yeah. Like that's we're, that's already done by by this. I know this isn't a popular way to think right now, and it feels very dumb to do it. But I hate people that say I just don't care. I can't hear it anymore. Uh huh. But <clears throat> really, today, I just don't care. I can't hear it anymore. And I, I again, I know that's like the pussy way out. And there's so many people that say that, right? Sure. The like, oh, I just don't even pay attention anymore. I mean, don't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You still need to like yeah. pay attention. Be alive in the world. Don't be a little dumb dumb. But at the same time, uh, me seeing it for what it is and knowing that this process is going to be so long, you're just I, like, okay. like I don't need I just, to be I don't, consumed by it day to day every single day. Yeah, like the everyday developments, which right. is so minute as far as like in the grand scheme yeah. of this whole thing, impeachment, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I really have shut down. And maybe it's just the weekend. Maybe I just shut down for the weekend. How about that? I feel like it, uh, you know, the only thing, <clears throat> look, we've talked about this numerous times on the show before. You only dump a, a massive news story on a Friday night if it's shitty, so that way nobody covers it over the weekend. Right. Typically, everybody's off. I was trying to think about it. Um, I was like, man, what else could possibly happen this weekend that would really explode? And there's only one thing in my mind. If, if RBG goes down this weekend, that would be the only thing where it would be like total chaos. Other than that, it's sports. And I, again, going back to this message that I got today, uh, that it was nice. Uh, like I enjoyed that. Fuck you from whoever that was. Because yeah, because it brought you back to, to like what's oh, hey. really important. Sports. Yes. Sports is important on the weekends and nothing else is. This is the the time of year that I love, where I go. Our friend has a birthday party, and you say, uh, "What time?" <laughs> and that's what's always really fun for me around this. Because my life goes on as usual because it has to. I have birthday parties every weekend. I have the soccer. I have the thing, you know, like. I, I do as well. I have all of those things. Sure. 
Sure. Just curious, though, about mm. one And party it's gotten and better. And what I hear when uh, I hear that it gets better and better every year as far as the husband not really. Because <coughs> in the beginning, it was rough. It was like your best friend's birthday, like across town. And you're like, I, I can't go. I right, can't go. Right. I have to stay here and watch the game. Sure. And so we've slowly, it's gotten better to where you're like, all right, I'll go for a little bit. And then maybe watch a little bit on my phone, come back for a half. You know, yeah. you, you've gotten, probably because you go to all the games, uh, you've gotten. No, uh, well, it, here's the thing. So doing that, the, a sports show once a week, you start to recognize the spreads and which games are important, right? So some of these games where I'm like, eh, all right, cool. Like mm -hmm. the, uh, last weekend, for example, is a perfect right. example. It was 76 to 5. And I was like, I knew it was going to be blowout but sure i didn't know it was gonna be that bad right. uh, but i was like eh, no, no worries like eh, i feel fine with this one mm -hmm. um this guy uh, who wrote in was just like uh i he clearly had a southern dialect to him okay um just by the by his words and the misspelling of all of his words he was definitely an sec fan um probably i want to guess bama or auburn sure just off the top of my dome uh probably in alabama he lives somewhere in Alabama, I'm sure. Sure. And I've not been too too kind to those teams because they've played a cupcake schedule. Auburn's uh, Auburn's been all right, but uh, probably a Bama fan if I had to, to shrink it down. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a nice little reminder of, hey man, I don't really give a shit about politics in it. Like I want to go back to saying fuck you, Ross, yes. for yeah. hating my team on a public national level, and I'm like, yeah, great, felt, felt good about that. It's nice. I get that. It's a nice I like little. That. Uh, uh, wakes the upsies this morning's. You know what else is nice, James? Hmm. New York Times bestseller list came out again. Again? Fifth week in wow. a row. Wow. Fifth week in a row. This time the audio book. At this point, I'm bored of it, right? Audio book's on there. At this point, it's like, oh. <laughs> No joking. <laughs> <laughs> this one is like, oh, are you again? Oh, cool, cool. I wish I can't wish keep we... going to Olive Garden. Yeah, I know, right? I wish we got money for that. Because mm. um, that's been a big question that I've gotten in from a, a lot of you listeners, do, right? In a way, you do, because that means there's a certain number that have been sold. So, in a way, you do, yeah. Yes, but it, the way it, it, that it, these deals are typically structured, it's hardback. So, like, oh, uh, oh so the audio doesn't doesn't really count. Render. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Neither okay. there's paperback or ebook. They they put a bonus on hardback because that's how the publisher makes the most money, obviously. But right. uh, I wish there was a clause in there for like New York Times right? list or something, but there isn't. So it's just a cool moment. We don't actually get any money for it, but but it's just rad. Five weeks. Eh. Five weeks. Five be six. <laughs> and seven too. <laughs> <laughs> just bored of being on the list. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I know, right? Um, and everybody else is like, oh man, how are you gonna top this and go back? And I was like, eh. Unless it's somebody big. Like there's a another friend of mine that I'd like to write his story. Yeah, we yeah. Um I don't know. I, like the you know, after being banned by Amazon, the last one happened to self publish that one. I realize how rad it is, where it's just like, man, that those checks just go right in at the end of the month. And you know, the only thing that you're missing is being on the list or being in airports. But let's face it, there's a lot of airports this wasn't in. Yeah, we were just we looked. You've been to what sixty airports with me? I feel like in the yeah. last ten days. Yeah, and the standard joke is like, oh, there's a. New York Times bestseller list with all the, the, the books on there. And you're like, oh, oh where's, mm, ah, mm -hmm, nope. Mm -hmm. And we're nope. just not seeing just it. Just can't, uh, can't find it. Uh, so other than that, <clears throat> who cares? Yeah. Who cares? This is a once in a lifetime accomplishment. And I'm good with it. Yeah. I'm good. I don't need like 60 on there, you know? Sure. After one, you're fine. The beauty of it is though, is I get to throw that. Is this, I'll answer another question that I'm getting a lot. Is like, hey man. Do you get to put that now on, on the rest of your books? Like you're by New York Times bestselling oh, author? And I'm like, oh no. yes, I do. You do? I do. Oh, yeah. You won't have like the seal on there, but it'll be by bestselling. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you get that because it's like a trademark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so once you achieve it, you get to put it on your other books. So like the hilarious thing is on the next one, it will on the next St. James book, it'll be on there. <laughs> I like it. Same. Same, I so like stoked. it. What's the next one? Are we, have we revealed the yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, um, what is it? As, as, the, the as the sun rises, it dawns on him. 
Blammo. Blammo. And then I think you put Blammo in there, didn't you? Uh, probably. Yeah. Probably. Um, <laughs> I'd say I'm about 40% through it right now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good. I rode on the plane the other day when we were oh, yeah, traveling right. to wherever. That's right. Still made the page count. I like to ride on planes. Yeah. It's kind of my fave, actually. Yeah. I like to, if, if it's a long flight and I can zone out. There's certain things that I only do on planes as well. Like what? Ginger ale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the only time. And combos? Ginger, Ginger ale and, and combos, combos yeah. is the only time <clears throat> that I can have those things and uh, watch certain TV shows or yeah. movies. I can really zone out on a, on a plane and, and write for a while. You really can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can pop up and go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so I feel pretty good about that. You Woo-doo. should feel good. So I'm, we're, of- we're thinking, by the way, uh, next August, I think. Is when uh, we're hoping to get that one out. Oh, nice, perfect. Yeah, we'll just do it. B- drop a book every August. Every August, yeah. It's been good luck the last two Augusts, so that's true. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of traveling, uh, you know I hate uh, Asians, right? Yep. And everyone knows that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Hate them. I just feel a certain way. But uh, Japan Airlines introduces child icon tool. So you can see now where babies are. You know when on you're the, picking on the plane, yeah. when you're picking your your um seat. Uh-huh. There's a little like baby, almost looks like the baby emoji, and it'll be on the seat so that you can bis- position yourself away from a- the babies accordingly. Oof, you can upcharge for that probably. Oh yes, and you know they will. Oh yeah, that's genius. That's yeah. genius. Because look, we have kids, mm-hmm. and I would, and I'm for it. Same. Same. I, I have I wanna, a screaming kid and I... On both ways. Yes. So as parents, I want people to know, hey, man, we're here and I hope we don't fuck up your travel. And then reverse, when we fly alone, I don't want to be near children because we hear our own children scream all the time. That, I mean, I don't really care. But if you do care, I don't want you around me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think the majority of people don't because a lot of people have kids, right? Yeah. So unless it is like a 4 a.m. flight or something and you're like, no, I know I have to sleep or a red eye or something, you have to sleep. Yeah. Other than that, it's like, go fuck yourself, to be honest with you. I, man, I. I don't care. I think this is so genius, actually, because on every single flight, they're trying to upcharge you for every last little stitch of everything. Basic economy, no ticket number. Yep. Do you want your seat to go back? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you like to get in Maine? Would you like mm-hmm. to get in uh, economy comfort business first? Now you're picking babies, exit rows, middle seats. Like they're gonna upcharge you for every little last thing. The next one is gonna be animals. I guarantee it. Would you like to sit next to this this petting horse? Yeah. No, no, yeah. I don't. Animals will be the next one. Yeah. I think we could go even further. Loud talkers, mm-hmm. right? That'd be nice. People that are going to drink a little bit and really want to talk to the person next to them very loudly behind you and just really get to know them on the flight. People who laugh at Vin Diesel movies. Yeah. With their headphones on. I I want to know know that that that's happening. People that are snoring. People that slump over on you. Like if you know these things about you. Yeah. I'd like an icon for it. Man, you could really upcharge the shit out of that. Because the next thing it's going to be is ages. Right. And weights. Put your age and weight in. Would you oh like to Lord. sit next to this fat know. man? I don't know. This 350-pound fat man? Or do you want to sit next to a little be. slim Jimmy? You know? <laughs> a little slim Jimmy. I'd, I'd, I'd I don't know. I don't think it's going to go Jimmy. that far, to be honest with you. But, um, again, it, they have done one thing right in my eyes. Uh-huh. So. Congratulations. Congratulations. Asians. Ah, they're better a- than us. Asians. They're better at everything better and the plane that they're doing this on is just gorgeous beautiful the yeah. seats are huge they don't need them to be but they are yeah get them get on them they really do everything better and as we all know my hatred of most things stems from jealousy yes yes it does i think that's probably race. true of of everything They're a better race. and everyone yeah yeah um yeah. i want to i want to get into this uh cam newton thing too um He's the quarterback for Carolina Panthers. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this. So uh, we've had our own on this, but uh, you are into health food. Okay. The healthy lifestyle, Mm -hmm. eating everything, blah, blah, blah. I've always said that it's not that great for athletes. Um, Because you're a big dude. 
Yeah. Uh, but it depends on which health way he's going. So the Cam Newton, the, the, the quarterback for the Carolina mm-hmm. Panthers, who's, look, all of their games are on here. We're kind of stuck with them. Yeah. They're all just on in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, they're saying that the reason why he's hurt this year and keeps getting injured is because he was on a vegan diet. I mean, um, maybe. I, I would think as a, f- as a football player that big, because he's a big dude. I would say you need protein, but again, it, it wouldn't, it, if he's, ju- it depends on how soon or how long he's been on this, right? Yeah. Um, but if it's just been however long, a, even just a year, yeah. that's not going to affect your that's muscles what, and bones that's why i was asking you much. so it, it doesn't or it, i mean I it'll felt, affect his weight and stuff uh i don't know what injuries he has a uh, leg injury a leg injury where it's did he break something no Is it he got hit it was, it was a bruise or like it's a deep bone bruise or something like that but Um, No, I mean, do I think in general being a vegan is a great (laughs) diet for athletes at that level? No. But if he was, it it hasn't affected him that that much. Okay. It would have to be years, I think, Mm -hmm. of being on that diet and being um, deficient in whatever he actually needs for a very long time. Yeah, because I was thinking back, like, I've tried it. I've, I've tried vegan for like maybe three or four months once, right? Mm-hmm. And I felt so lethargic and not to say like brittle, but like I just, I didn't feel as strong in my bones and things like that. Um, and maybe it's no, because I'm not on it. The... You're not on it long enough or maybe uh-huh. it's just a shock to the system. Right. So maybe this is what happened Most with, of the time I hear that you have lots of energy and you feel very light. And everything seems like it's kind of moving through and working the way it should. So I'm not yes, sure. But I didn't feel stronger. So like I, I like to lift weights, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, huge. <laughs> Barely fit in the frame. Like, um, either way, James. Uh, <laughs> I didn't feel like in. I, I felt strange. Like I, I felt in my bones. Like I, I felt. I didn't feel as strong anymore. Mm. And I don't know why, obviously. Is that look? Brady does this shit. I think everybody. But Brady doesn't have. He's not a big guy like Cam Newton. He's kind of thin, and you know. Right. You know, there you can pull up a shirtless photo of Brady from the beach last summer, and you're like, "Oh, that is." Did you see that with with Giselle? It's the best. It's yeah. like this is the best quarterback in of the, all time. Of all time. And now that's look at his body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was hilarious, actually. But I don't think everybody is the same i know like da- like d'anthony for example yeah. will be like eat, you got to eat something eat pop tarts eat meat all day and for me personally and i've done it like i've been on you know i'll eat a bunch of red meat it does not make me feel good it makes me feel very heavy and very like how do i say blocked up and so yeah uh, because I've heard as well that red meat will stay in your system a lot longer. longer and that's yeah. for some people good and some people, it depends on what you do, what kind of exercising you do, what you're, I mean, I don't believe in eating for your blood type, but I don't think that vegan is right for everyone. I don't think that red meat is right for everyone. I think that we all are very different. Yeah. Depending on all different kinds of factors. So what works for Brady may not work for Cam Newton and... Uh, he may be getting hurt because he's not, he's deficient in something that he was getting before. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Brady needs the same nutri. you know? Yeah. That's what I think. But, and I, it's weird that you were vegan and felt like lethargic and sick if you were doing it for that long. Like that's crazy to me because that's usually not how it goes yeah f- not I felt, that you uh, can sustain it but usually people are and it's the same with anything if you start a new diet and a new regiment you're gonna feel great because your body is like it's something new right and then eventually after that it starts to be like this isn't working for me right yeah so when people are like gotta go vegan it's like you tried something new mm-hmm. so if i was a vegan and i switched to meat I'd feel great for a little bit, right? Because I've switched my, I've tried something new and switched it up a little bit. So, 
Yeah, I just you know. felt uh, kind of lethargic on it, but I, I think it's probably on your body type and what you're used to and things like that. Like, you know. Yeah, I mean. Chicken meats. Like, I'm a, I'm a big carnivore guy. Right. Um, and I think he was the same. I think there could be actually something to this. Like, I, you switch like that midlife. And yeah, you're just like, I mean, all right, cool. Yeah. Um, and I think Brady. I've also, yeah. I've also known vegans that have been overweight, too, where I'm just like. How is that possible? Because you can eat chips and shit, I guess. Right. So my friend, my friend a little bit after high school, I guess. So I'll say high school and after high school was a vegan, a vegetarian. Okay. But the things that you substitute if you're not health conscious about it are like quesadilla, pasta. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, so yes, yes, yes. fat vegans are a thing. <laughs> fat vegans that do yoga are huge in Ojai flexible as shit just a fat <laughs> lady have you ever seen this with a with no. her leg just all the way around because she does yoga all the time right um is a vegan mm -hmm. but you know what doesn't have animal products in it oil and sugar right so you can have a vegan cookie guess what it's filled with right <laughs> sugar oils like a cacao chocolate you yeah. know so uh it is possible to be a fat vegan for sure and maybe brady was doing it in a way that was way better for him than cam newton because there is a way to be like i'm vegan i guess i'm gonna have fucking lettuce only and what pasta with oil on it or you know well, what i mean you know it's funny a friend of mine uh was like hey man i tried that impossible whopper yeah and uh, he goes, did you know that's only 10 calories difference than, than a real Whopper? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. No. It's for people that have moral reasons. Okay. Because you're slathering with cheese, all the sauces, all the thing, and, and basically it's a tofu tempeh type thing, and that will fill you up, um, and you're putting all the other shit on it. So... That's the other thing, too. It's like, I'm ve vegan. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's vegan mayonnaise. There's vegan cheese. There's And they're filled with all these carb-like, oil, sugary things. Man, I'm going to tell you, uh, the other night, after a long uh, long shift, as we went live on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Uh, stayed up with everybody, and uh, yeah. we're commenting live and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, would you would you for eat Bros that? podcast, I'm going to tell you what I, I had. Please, I know uh, you're. I went, I popped on down to uh, the cookout. Oh, uh, wow. You really treated yourself. I did. I did. My gosh, I had no idea that you were going there. I might have asked for a little. You were not even close to being up at that nope. point of the. I evening. was, as usual, partying. Nope. My butt off. So if you're I, you guys, if I don't asleep. answer the phone or messages past nine, it's because I'm partying so hard, <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> Yeah, you were fast asleep. Sure, and sure, sure. Can you blame on, me? Popped on down to the good for you. Uh, the cookout wasn't. Oof. By the way, wasn't the first choice. And uh, what did you want? I was gonna go to Chick Fil A. Oh well. Just get a spicy chicken sandwich, right? Just call it a day. Call it something sort of lighter. They're they're a civilized drive-through, which means they're open daytime hours. Yeah. So yeah. they were closed at ten thirty, eleven, you or whatever betcha. it was. I was surprised. You don't want that bullshit coming through the drunks and the shit. And then out of the, my periffs, you know, the periffs on the side. Your peripheral, peripheral, peripheral yep. vision? My, my periffs. Sure. Uh, looking down, I, ca I catch that sign of the cookout, and I'm like, whoopsie. There you go. Whoopsie ding dong. One door closes and another one opens. If you love something, open throw a it away. the window opens. And it'll come back. God opens the window. And right in your life. Right into your life. And if you let it fly, fly away, it'll come it'll back. It'll come right back into burger. the window. Yep. And I, I dropped in there and I got I got whatever the big one was. I was like, hey, can I get like a double? Because I don't know their can menu I that well. Can I get whatever the big one is? Is that what you said? Yeah, because I was looking at their menu and I just wanted like a double cheeseburger, right? But I didn't see that. Jeez. And they had said, no, it's it's the big one. That's is literally what it's called. Oh, okay. The big one. And okay. I was like, oh, great. I'll take that. I was like, is that two burgers? And they were like, yeah, it's the big one. And I was like, oh my gosh. great. Don't Starbucks me here. You know, sure. don't tell me at all is your smallest. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> just go. Let's just operate. The big one's actually the smallest one we have. And then yeah. it goes colossal and kill yourself and heart attack. Let's operate in fat boy terminology here. Let's go, you know, 
double, triple, whatever the, gimme, the patty gimme. is. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll figure it out from there. Sure. And uh, sunk my teeth into that thing. Whew. Did you do that in the car? Or did you bring it back to the house? Brought it back to the house. They oh, cook okay. it all their shit super fresh, so it's hot as hell. Uh-huh. I would not. That Cannot. is not a sandwich you can't mm-hmm. pop in your mouth where it's like McDonald's, where chances are eight out of ten orders. It's been sitting underneath the fryer. You can at least feel safe popping that in your beak. You know, right? Uh, with with cookout though, it is fresh right off the grill. Do not pull out of the drive thru and stuff that in your mouth. You're gonna Mm-mm, burn your face you will off. Burn your face off. So I took that home. Uh, Pretty much with the carefulness of a newborn, you know, uh-huh. just walked it, kind of <sighs> cradled it up into the house yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and then waited. But my God, man, they don't get enough credit over there at cookout. That's why I'm shouting them out today. They really are. And I, I, I don't about see them, them on any of these lists because yeah. uh, it was it, for whatever I reason. They're... I always see Whataburger versus In-N-Out memes. There must be as many In-N-Out as there is cookout, right? Because cookout South, is not a huge chain, which is probably why it's not uh, put in the the big five or whatever. Yes. Either way, I'm sorry for sleeping on you, cookout. You were just as Oof. amazing as always, and I loved every last bite of it. I'm happy for you. Thanks, Chips. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm happy for our sponsors. Me uh, too. We got some sponsors to put this whole shit wagon on the air. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is the best in the biz, Jabes. Mattresses, oh. pillars, I cannot wait. Sheets, adjustable bases. Uh, they got everything in store. This is our first weekend off, I feel like. Yes. In a long time. Yeah. I'm going to look like a homeless person. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sleep like one too. Don't you feel like they sleep a lot? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I would say so. When they can. When yeah. they can. Yeah, they don't, yeah, yeah. don't have that, that much to do throughout the day. Sure. Uh, if you don't have that much to do to throughout the day, you can lay in that ghost bed all weekend. Uh-huh. Uh, if you were military or a first responder, you get 15% off of everything in the store. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get on it. If you're a regular human like uh, myself or, or, J- or Jabes <laughs> or the jobless. Yes, I am a normal human. Um, I've not done anything remarkable in no, my life. No, we're regular humans. Uh, you get two hundred dollars off the Ghost Lux, um, and then a hundred dollars off the Classico free pillows. As always, at GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros, you get a thirty-six month pay-as-you-go program. No interest. No one is doing that. No one. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Ghostbed.com for us. That's Drinker Bros. Damn it. Damn it, Bob. All right. Um, I, what if I had a gay fight like that? You know? What do you mean a gay fight? Like it just popped up that I was gay like 10 years ago. And then you found this like gay slap fight of me online. of like, damn it, Bob. Damn it. <laughs> and then you had to deal with that. We were like, hey, man, were you, do you used to be a homosexual dude? And I was like, mm-hmm. eh, for a little bit, for about three years with a guy named Bob. Right. Oh, why'd you see the online fight at Burger King? And it's just like, yeah. Damn it, Bob. And all suspicions will be confirmed. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you do? Would you leave me? No. I, I feel like I'm gay. a beard anyways. <laughs> <laughs> this is not true, James. I know. I'm joking. We joke around. I'm a sexual machine, you know? <laughs> Damn it. Um, there might be something wrong with me, actually. Uh <laughs> Self-proclaimed. James, you want to back that up? Hey, look, what? Huh? You, then that's your opportunity to back that up. What um, do you mean back it up? It's true. Oh, yeah, no, uh, sure. There might be something wrong inside my body. Um, yeah. Mentally, I it's don't know. It's mostly me, you know? It is. You're hot. You're a hot little piece. Yeah, that's what I tell myself. Yeah, you're a little two-piece combo. Right. Bang, bang. But um, still, when you... You think about Bob is when you get the most joy in my life. Excited, yeah. so very broke back. Yeah, and I think that's <laughs> how the beards <laughs> go, right? Like they know you're thinking about something else. It's not true. But they actually. just pretend it's that maybe this time. I worked with a guy with a beard for a very, very long time, and one day his fucking—I I think they're married now at this point. Um, anyways, whoops. Uh, no, Eight. I'll tell you why. One day. We had a dinner. She had fucking housed. She got housed. Yes. And okay. she was just like, oh no. I think he's fucking gay. 
we never have sex and we never have fucking do it. And just launched into the, the tirade that we all thought. And it was just like, oh no. Fucking A. Suspicion confirmed. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you, if you get drunk and say all kinds of things, but I think in real life, you try and tell yourself, you know, maybe it is me that's super hot. It is. It and is not you. And not thinking of the beer, not thinking of Bob. Bob. Bob, damn it, Bob. Damn it. Uh, nothing like segueing from that to strikeforceenergy.com. Sorry, both to Ghostbed and now Strikeforce. Nope. Let's do a... Not at all. You're welcome for my brilliance. Um... Look, Bob's everywhere. Drink Strike Force. You got to keep that energy up at the clubs. Sure. Zzz, 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 zzz. Lots of mesh. damn it, damn it, Bob. Damn it, damn it, Bob. I want to hear a, like a remix of that. You know? Yeah. R- Me too. R.I.P. Avicii. But if he Me was alive, too. sounds awesome. If he was, really. if Avicii was alive today, he would really R.I.P. jump all over that. Yeah. Damn it, Bob. Zzz, zzz, damn it. Damn it. Damn it, damn it. <laughs> Beat drop. Okay. Damn it, Bob. Okay. Damn it, Bob. Nobody's asking bam, for it. Bam, Nobody's bam, asking bam, for this to happen. I think everybody's asking for the damn it, Bob song. And uh, <laughs> I might have to I might have to record it. Damn it, Bob. Damn it, damn it, damn it, Bob. Might have to record this. <laughs> I tell you what, if I do, we'll drop it on the show. Um, it'd be so good, wouldn't it? Really would be great, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. leather biker outfit. Really be great. Damn it, Bob. Damn it, damn it, damn it, Bob. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com if you want to damn it, Bob, all over uh, your friends and family. Got to get hyped up if you're going to throw a damn it, Bob, out at somebody. Mm-hmm. No better place to do that than Strike Force Energy. Four amazing flavors. Grape, orange, lemon, and orange. Lemon and orange? Yeah, but France. France. France for them. No carbs, no sugars. Last longer than five hour energy. It's a tasty tiny little tin pouch. Rips open and squeezes into any liquid available. So you can damn it, Bob. Damn it, damn it, damn it, Bob. All through the weekend. Sure. I'll keep you up. Keep you going. Keep your fist pumping. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. They ship everywhere in the entire world. Isn't that nice? And they have a subscription of the month that will keep you coming back for more and more. And more. Mm. Last but not least, we got straightrazors.com. Jabes, why don't you tell us about it? Uh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Mm. Oh, you right, kids? There we go. There <laughs> we are. There uh, we are. Uh, oh, Jabes. Jabraham Lincoln. Every time you do that, it makes me smile. Oh, yes. Straightrazors.com has got everything you need to be a real man in this life. A real hombre. A real shaved up Newton. You yeah. Know? A, real, a real fulcrum. A real full fulcrum. You could use it to shave whatever you want. Any body part, any pets. Butts. Everything. Taints. Taints. Vaginas. Vaginas. Yep. Arms. Arms. Legs. Legs. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Get straightrazors.com. We are so in tune. And get the accoutrements <laughs> of all the products. Enjoy the lifestyle that has become a worldwide sensation. Straightrazors.com. It's nice, isn't it? It is. So nice. So nice. So nice. Um, if you're worried about using a straight razor, they got safety razors. And you can also sit in a car seat and shave. So you can do that too. Gosh. If you're a little baby. Uh, go to really straightrazors.com. Like to Promo code REVOLUTION 20% off. What'd you say? I'd really like to hear that how they feel about our reads love it. from beginning to end. So I it starts with a every last second of it. Asian war cry. Yep. It goes right into to butts, vaginas, butts, vaginas taints, taints, pussies. Pussies. Uh, so you're welcome. Straightrazors.com. They Promo must code be revolution cool. 20% off. They must be cool people. They're real cool. They must be, I mean, the products are amazing, they but party. they must party because they do. otherwise we would be getting the little ding dong call. Gin and tonics on Friday afternoon over at uh, straightrazors.com. Really? Yeah, a little G&T Fridays they do. I love it. I know. I they're in it. fucking Idaho, um, which is, what? you know, they're cool. You know, they're cool. And I guess we're going to have to pop on out. Pop I keep saying out. that, but it's not a, it's not a short journey to Idaho from here. So, yeah. 
bunch of cool people are moving there, though. Hmm. Court Leon. I believe that's the town. Okay. Um, Dan Cummins lives there. Him and his oh. wife, and they have a studio there. They they have a studio in town. Which There's is dope. another reason to go out there. I know, okay, I know. Okay. And him and his wife just started a show together too. Nice. She's funny as well. Cool. Um, man, this uh, we we had mentioned the Epstein thing on um, Drinking Bros News the other mm-hmm. day. Um, more and more, just every day, it's just something, some little nugget pops out. We're like, mm-hmm. oh, all right, cool, man. The Butler is now dropping bombs on people. He says Bill Gates was there. Uh, the, the latest was, uh, he said Bill Gates was there and Melinda. And what do you mean by there? At, at his house. At whose house? Uh, Jeffrey Epps. Epstein's, yeah. Okay. As close as 2013. Remember everybody was like, uh, we cut ties with him in 2011 right. or whatever it was. Like, not sure. Right. It's sort of a Harvey Weinstein situation. Do I think Bill Gates and Melinda are getting children? From him to have sex with? No. But it's the kind of thing where, you know, how people were still hanging out with Harvey Weinstein after they knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And it doesn't mean that they were doing any, had anything to do with it. Yeah. I I just, again, as all these stories pop up, we'll we'll talk about them briefly. Mm -hmm. But I think we've touched on on a lot of this where somebody with this much money... Mm -hmm. You're always running these circles with these fucking people because you're trying to get money for X, Y, and Z or, you know, charities or it's I just wonder, too. my only thing, and from the very beginning, I've wondered, like, who is protecting this Maxwell chick? Yep. She is literally as much in it, if not more, than he was. Yeah. She was involved in sexual encounters in, like, with the girls Involved in getting them there, yeah. involved in covering it up, involved in a lawsuit in, what was it, 2014? Yeah, yeah. So why is that not just... Not sure. Right. So until that happens, you know, there's some, someone's covering her up or she is, there's some kind of immunity thing that's going on with her. But the fact that she's not being just brought in and we aren't going... F- Going forward yeah. <laughs> with the same thing. She's being protected by somebody. Um, I want to give you some credit here. Uh, I'm kind of changing my tune. I, I've said this for six, eight months on this show. There's been this snake-like UFO that keeps it re- it's returning over and over and over mm-hmm. again. Uh, the, the new one today was a guy got a shot of it in the Mojave Desert midday. Mm. And we got about two and a half minutes worth of footage of it. You may be right about this one. Uh, and here's why I say that. I don't think you're going out midday doing this shit. Like, um, if it's not some form of government test where you're like, mm-hmm. hey, we're working on right. some type of defense option yeah, for. Yeah, which that they're not telling you about, which yes. is fine. They don't have to. Because otherwise, <laughs> it's the same one that just keeps popping up over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. It looks like a long, skinny, almost kind of cigar shape, but it's also flat. Mm -hmm. And it's tough. It's huge. So it's tough to see unless you're underneath it, how big or whatever it is. It's it's flat. Um, But the fact that people are now getting videos of of this thing midday Mm -hmm. where it's like, all right, this is probably some form of military test for something that we're working on. So, yeah. Maybe for this one, you're right. The other ones. Again. Right. Not sure on the other ones, but mm-hmm. we're not sure. I know. No, the way things are going, it's like uh, I watched uh, that that Boston, the new Boston Robotics one. Okay. The the Boston Dynamics. Remember they made the dogs, the robots. Oh yeah, dogs, yeah, yeah. What are they the, working on now? The people and the the, the robots were jumping up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Backflips. Now these robots, they just their new video. Backflips. Full backflip like a gymnast. It's impressive. Yeah, standing. Just kick you right in the face and fucking take oh you down. Oh my god! <laughs> it was so frightening. I'm like, stop doing this because they keep Those dropping videos these videos. Are so frightening, and they keep dropping them like every six months. Where it's just like it started off with the dog, right? I was like, Ugh, I don't, I'm good on that, right? Mm-hmm. And then the dog could open the door with his paws, and you were like, stop doing that. Mm-hmm. And then the human, right? Mm-hmm. And then the human running up the stairs, right? And then jumping up mm-hmm. flights of, and then. Now back you're doing backflips. Yeah. Like, and then roundhousing. There yeah. is no version of this that is good for any of us. No. Why do they need to backflip? 
<laughs> That's what I thought. Right, though? Unless you're trying to recreate every single motion that a human can do so that way they can kill us all or kill other countries sure and that's gonna be the thing right i look i'm just happy we won't be around for this shit i'm starting to feel more and more comfortable with that yeah uh, i saw matt uh you know obviously matt best is one mm-hmm. of my, my my beef fries in this life and like uh his parents also you know moved to be closer to him yeah his dad mm-hmm. and Matt will roll over there and play guitar with them. And uh, uh, I saw a video of just the two of them playing guitar in the middle of the country. I've been in that house, you know, a few times before. It was dad's house. Mm -hmm. And it's just simple, easy. He's playing Johnny Cash and doesn't know anything about the Boston dynamic robot dogs. And uh, it's one of those things where you're like, man, I'm starting to think now that that's the generation, like where you're like, eh, I'm good on all this. Because I think by the end of ours, we're going to see some of this weird shit happen yeah. and it's going to be like frightening. And then you're going to be worried about your children at this point, like Matt's dad, right? Mm-hmm. Simple. And country. in some ways, Matt, yeah. Matt probably doesn't know a lot about the robots, to be honest with you. No, I know. He really likes to not think about that stuff, which might be the smartest thing. It might be the smartest thing. Yeah. But when I looked at, when I looked at the two of them, just happy as shit on Instagram. Oh yes. Playing guitar, drinking not a whiskey, care in the world. not a care in the world. And I was like, man, that generation is probably the last of it. Um, because then what? Like our, I was thinking, I was talking to Jared about this too. Uh, and I was like, what's ours then? Like mm-hmm. what's, what's going to be ours in like 15 years? He's like, dude, all these stations are just going to be gangster rap for us. And it's just like. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, you're going to have to go through the dials on like a Sirius XM or something like that. Uh, is there even going to be radio? Probably not. Probably not Sirius <laughs> probably XM. Not. So it'll be something don't have to worry about that. But yeah, yeah, it'll be something probably. probably. Like, uh, it, I think radio in the future will be apps where you're just going through like, hey, man, there's a 60s app or. Yeah, you know, yeah. Spotify or mm-hmm. w- whatever is going to be the thing. But you're going to have a bunch of those and they're not going to be 20 bucks. They're going to be like five a piece. And that's going to be your app inside your, your dashboard inside your car. It's probably going to look like your smart TV where it's just like, all right, right. this is what we're doing now. I'm just going to go through and pop on over 90 apps and that's going to be that probably. Um, yeah. I mean, I try not to think about it, but I guess I have to. Because of what we do. You, what we do and you think about that stuff a lot. I do. Yeah, I do. In a positive I... way. I mean, I was able to recognize what, what I thought was happening. Yeah. But I remember doing a paper on this in college. I, I told you this story. I don't know Ooh. if I told her on air. Oh, you college Ooh, boy! Oh, you, you smart! Oh, you smart! You went to college, shit. Go yeah. ahead. Um, and we had to come up with a new form of like a, a major in journalism and communications at Ohio State. So we had to come up with a new form of media that we thought was going to happen. And okay. Mine was Sirius XM, and and hmm. I got like a C minus on this project, this paper. My professor was like, "There's no way you'll ever pay for radio." I was just like. Phew cut to exactly 12 years later i think it was or whatever you know and i was just like you motherfucker and then now we're not even going to pay for it anymore it's all going to be on the itunes well we still are paying for itunes so uh i'm saying like podcasts like for your podcast app oh yeah whatever yeah, yeah. so any show you know with how quickly it can go out uh i guess the next feature would be being able to be live on the podcast app. So speaking of that, I just got an email from Podbean, who's our, our host. Mm-hmm. They are doing that. They're doing a live streaming. Yeah. They I'm not are. sure how exactly it's working. Well, here's the problem. It's working for them and their site and their right. app, which a lot of but people listen to our show on Podbean out. app. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's not going out to iTunes live mm-hmm. and all that other stuff. But, but I if think Podbean's doing it, you better believe fucking iTunes getting is close. working on it. Yeah, it's yeah. getting close. Um, iTunes is also, uh, by the way, they're, they're making movies. Um, now they were doing TV shows Mm -hmm. today. They announced movies. Okay. Um, same thing as Netflix where they will maybe go to theaters, maybe for a couple weeks and then go to streaming. So that frontier is, is, uh, upon us with Apple as well, Mm -hmm. but I'm not in, I'm not into it. So no, no. Uh, Um, this John Cryer tweet just popped up. Oh yeah. (laughs) He's he's responding. 
I mean, Demi is really taking name and names. Yeah, you have to in a book like that, I think. To get top I dollar. I guess, but it's seeming everyone's disputing what she's saying, though. Yeah, they're always going to, though. They, they always Why? will because it's it, it's a bad look for whoever and like let's say you have a wife and John kids now. Cryer though but let's say you have a wife and kids now right and this shit's popping up of like dude Demi Moore took your virginity at 14 like it's probably something you don't want to hear well if you're John Cryer's wife and, and children uh, if you maybe it's children. so he said well the good thing about this is she doesn't have to feel bad about it anymore because while I'm sure she was totally justified making that assumption based on my skill level and stunned look on my face at the time, I actually lost my virginity in high school. Mm. So he's only he, he's not saying it in a bad way. He's just saying, I understand how you would think that. No. Look, if Demi Moore calls you out in a book and says, I took your virginity, you go all in on that if you're a dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, Demi Moore did. You'd be a legend. He's saying no. Yeah. Come on. He's Cryer. saying, look. But she's right about the other part. I was over the moon for her during a very troubled time in her life. I have nothing but affection for her and not a regret in the world. But just saying, hey, another thing that's maybe not true in well, your book. Well, so, so here's what happens with these books, right? And I want to be clear. I don't like Demi Moore and I think she's a bitch. Okay. Carry on. Yeah, I will. Always have. Carry on or check baggage. Um <laughs> Dumb. Uh. Here's the thing about <laughs> autobiographies or biographies about your life. Mm -hmm. If the publisher doesn't feel that, like, a Demi, like a Demi get, Moore, yeah. salacious enough, they'll go back and ask for more stories mm -hmm. about your life. They do that with everyone. Right. Um, and I would lean towards the camp that Demi Moore probably did most of the shit. Um, but I guarantee the publisher went back and was like, hey, man. We need names. We need some stories. We need to sell this fucking thing. And you've got to meet this advance um, because you don't get paid until after mm -hmm. it's turned in and all that stuff. So uh, I, I guarantee there was some back and forth between the publisher and her of like, hey, man, let's start ramping up these stories. Let's talk about doing blow with Emilio Estevez, mm -hmm. you know, in Colorado or something. Because let's face it, Emilio looks like a guy who just pounded down cocaine. Oh, yeah. He definitely did. He comes by it honestly. But yeah. Yeah, I, I, man, I heard the Young Guns set was out of control, by the way. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Charlie Sheen, Emilio, LDP, Lou Diamond Phillips. Slater? Who else? Christian did Slater. I mean, you imagine. So it was Young Guns one. Imagine the cocaine on that. Oh. I heard uh, Eight Men Out, which is also very similar cash. Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Maybe the through line is Charlie Sheen. Yeah, I heard There's they were a lot just of... ripping rails the entire time. Oh, we have Keith. Oh, Keever Sutherland, Keith. come on! How the did I forget Estevez, that? The Estevez, the LDP, the Sheen. Oof. Uh, yeah, that is man. a murderer's row. The Dermot Mulroon. Yeah, that is a murderer's row of drugs and alcohol. Oh yes, oh yes. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what? What was the other one? Yeah, it's the through line for sure. That's the through line for sure. So Eight Men Out was uh, Sheen. It was uh, your boy. God, he played uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Oh, okay. He was in the ice skating movie that you oh, love. Oh, 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 oh. D.B. Oh. Sweeney. Uh, D.B. Yeah. Um, it was all those guys. They used to go hard back in the day. Oof. Yeah. You could do that and get away with it. Oh, back then for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Yeah. For sure, Z's. I'm looking for the cast of that two. Fucking, so that, yeah, well, same. They're back. Slater was in two. I'm sorry, he wasn't in the first one. Even um, more, they probably were like, "Hey, man, how do we ramp up? How do we get more drugs? Get yeah, Slater in it. Get Slater get in here. Slater in get it. Vigo. Get fucking yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. Different time though, man. And you yeah. could get away with that. And you used to have somebody to wake you up and all that shit. Uh, and I'll go back to that Gandolfini story with you know when he was shooting that movie with uh, Sean Penn. Hmm. Gandolfini went on a bender, and yeah. Sean Penn's like, hey, man, he didn't show up to set. When Sean Penn is shaming you? No, he wasn't shaming him. He goes, Sean Penn goes, hey, he talked to the, the production team, uh -huh. and he just said, look, probably went on one last night, so here's what you do. Take a bottle of whiskey over to his room, gently wake him up, uh, present him with this fine bottle of whiskey, let him have a 
couple chooches off of it, and he'll be, he'll be in the afternoon. We're okay. And he goes, we've all been through it. We've all been through it. Sure enough, Gano Feeney shows up. Oof. It's completely pleasant to the crew and the cast, and they resume shooting as normal. That was a thing for a while. Right. Where it was just like, all right, it was respect. Okay. So it was a drug respect. Okay. That does not exist that anymore. That was in the day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It does yes, not yes, exist yes. anymore, though. Uh, but it should. It was a nice thing back then. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Wyatt Earp just came up, and I was like, let me look at this cast and see how many, how much Coke was going. And uh, drugs. Wyatt Earp? Wyatt Earp. Costner, Quaid, yeah. Hackman, Oof. Michael Madsen. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Pullman, but I'm sure Pullman was. Uh, oh. was fine. Sizemore. <laughs> so we've got Tom Sizemore. We have uh, Madsen. Yikes. Boy. Boy. I'm surprised they Wyatt shot one Herb. day of film yeah. between the two <laughs> yeah. of those guys. That is amazing. The funny thing about Wyatt Earp was it was shooting exactly at the same time as Tombstone. And uh, Tombstone came out first and buried it. Tombstone was the best. I didn't let it get down on Wyatt Earp. No, I didn't either. But... It's too long. It's too long. It was one of those movies that was like nine hours. Speaking of that, fuck that. They just dropped the, the new trailer for The Irishman for uh, Netflix with De Niro and Pacino and those guys. Three and a half hours. Oh. It is going to be a three and a half hour movie. So the runtime is, is uh, 2.09. Mm-hmm. And I thought, ah, two hours and nine minutes. I was mistaken. That is 209 minutes long. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Which, uh, look, I was trying to think about it. I was like, man, when's the last time you got away with it? And I, it's always Scorsese. He's the one that gets away with those yes. three-hour movies. Yes. They're always good. Does he get away with them? Okay. I felt like what Wolf of Wall Street w- was that long. Uh, like Raging Bull was that long. Like, mm. Yeah. I feel, I feel like he, if there's one guy who can get away with it, it's probably Yeah, you're him. right, you're right. And I'll sit through that cast. You know? I'll sit through De Niro and Pacino and all those guys For like sure. in, a, in a Scorsese sure. movie because you know they were on the top of their games. Um, so yeah, uh, but that was a shocker. It was like, shit, man, that's a whole day you got to plan around. Oh On yeah, Netflix, dude, I'll have to start watching it at 5 PM. That is six and a half. Uh, that's the seven episodes of the office back to back in that maybe more because the office is only about 22 minutes. Oh God. <laughs> Be like watching a full half season of the office, man. Sorry. One day. <laughs> IMDb is giving me all kinds of amazing information. Right Fire now. away, James. Trans- Friday afternoon. Pa- Transparent the musical. Huh. Don't want to see that at all. The musical finale, yep. What, 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 where is it? Is that a movie? or On Prime. So the finale of Transparent is going to be a full musical. Nope. Nope. I'll probably never see that. Well, yeah, we stopped watching the. I mean, we never. You never really gave the show up. Uh, I did. I gave it a fair shake. Okay, I watched, yeah, I watched yeah, the pilot. Yeah. yeah. I just couldn't. I could never buy uh, Jeffrey Tambor and uh, the whole thing. It just it didn't make sense to me at all. Well, he's not in this, so. He's not. No, they t- he got kicked off the show. Yeah, he got me. I know he got me too on yeah. that thing, but I didn't know yeah. if they brought him back for that. Of like, hey, huh? Because he won like. 90 Emmys, I feel like, for that show, even though two people were watching it. Uh-huh. Wow. So then bring him a, back. All right. Just a different, oh, yes. Uh, I, you know what's interesting is he was on Arrested Development. Yes. Well, during the Me Too thing, which... The cast took out, stuck up for him, and then yeah. Bateman took a lot of heat for it. Mm-hmm. But uh, my guess is, because Empire, this is their last year, I, I bet you they bring back Small A. Juicy Smolle, why? Yeah, I bet you they bring him back for the finale because it's the end of the show. And he's still technically under contract, so Oof. Fox is going to want those ratings. Oof. I bet you they pop him in for the finale. Gosh. Yeah. That's going to be one of those things that I think in like f- five years, because I do love to do a, re- a, a member that, mm-hmm. right, segment. A member when? Yeah. This sto- The Juicy Smolle story... Uh, is going to be one of those where you're like, remember that fucking crazy shit, dude? Yeah. Fucking they got him at every angle, walking all around the world. If hard boxes of Trivial Pursuit still exist, yeah. that will be a 
definite entertainment definite. question in five or ten years. Definite. Who was the guy and what show was he on? Who juicy faked his smelly. own? Yeah. yeah. It'll be juicy. Juicy. Um, we do. We host a sports show. We do gambling on that show. And we do spreads. Um, there is a guy from Houston, a Houston mattress company salesman. I'm not going to say what it is because we only do ghost bet on this show. He wants to bet $10 million on the Astros. Whew. That's, uh, that is crazy, man. Don't do it. <laughs> well, I think he wants to do a giveaway and he wants to protect his business here. Okay. Um, on a refund promotion in case, because he said he would give everybody a free mattress in Houston if, if the Astros won. So now he's got to bet $10 million to actually back it up in case they do. Got it. By the way, hosting a sports show, I will say objectively, even though my, my beloved Braves Either are in it. Either way you lose the money, though. Go ahead. Well, you got to hedge it. You got to hedge your bets. I, I know. Hence the yeah, phrase, yeah, hedge yeah. your bets. But um, again, hosting a sports show objectively, even though my Braves are in it, the Astros, in my eyes, probably are the favorites to win the World Series. Huh. They have the best pitching. I was an Astros fan for a year. No way. Because I thought that I was uh, to, like fully together with Andy Pettit. Me and him were a thing. Did he pitch? He- yeah. And so he went to the Astros for <laughs> and I felt like I needed to follow him. Oh, really? That's weird. <laughs> that was your jam, huh? Andy, Andy Pettit. Pettit. Andy Pettit's my end all be all. Yeah. That's my boy. All right. So, and then I was like, oh, uh, and got like uh, kind of shaken out of it. Like, you don't have to follow your, pl- you know what I mean? You like, can. You can, but uh, <laughs> no. I did it as a kid. No. I did it with Ricky Henderson. Whatever team he went to, I was like, all right, I'm in. Then that's your new team? Man, I loved him so much where it was just like, all right, yeah, Yankees. Yeah, so that's, that's what it was. Oakland A's. And then he started moving to like 90 different teams. And I was like, I can't even follow you anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's the saddest about it at the end of, the, uh, of a career when you start going to like, 90 different teams yeah, to start yeah, playing yeah. for everybody else. Yeah. It's probably why Jeter and those guys, Kobe, you know, everybody loves them the most because they stay with their own teams mm-hmm. and everything like that. Like, I have the same feelings about LeBron. It was just like, she should have stayed in Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, all this dumb shit moving around. It doesn't make any sense. No, it made sense for them. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. Um, also, you know what doesn't make any sense to me? Hmm. Buffalo Wild Wings, their new uh, tenders, breaded tenders. They were really touting those. We got them the other night. We got we got roped into it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They got you because they put the picture on the Whoa. front and you're like, Jim uh, Jones. Yeah. I thought it was going to be some breaded amazing amazingness. No, no, not the case. It was at all. the rubber uh, Petri dish chicken. So it was that rubbery Foster's. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. That you hate like the Foster's. I hate the Foster's chicken, man. I can I can. You can spot it from a, a mile weird, away. That's yeah. a weird talent of mine that mm-hmm. I can spot Foster's chicken in any chicken dish in America, and I know exactly what brand of chicken it is. Yeah, it's a I superpower like power for sure. And this look, I'll, I'll give you the another high five today. A lot of high fives dished out to Jabe's today. Um, oh, I'll take it. I feel you because you have these theories on food and like things getting pumped full of steroids and all that mm-hmm. shit. Like I feel that's why with that chicken, where I'm like, there's something they're pumping that fucking thing with that. Just, pumping it with or like i said growing it in a t- test tube or something either way man I, I i believe in that i definitely believe in that okay cool so come to this come to the side eh, just for, no, for fosters just for i don't know what's going on yeah, that other i shit. guarantee All somebody that other writes shit is in fucking bullshit. Yeah, no bullshit, everything yeah. else you say is bullshit but yeah i don't i don't buy any of your skin cancer. I don't cancer. buy any of your fucking bullshit except for you'll take my ginger shots every day, drink the booch. Maybe this is your, your the, slow transforma- transformation to take me over, you know? Mm-hmm. It's coming yep. to your side all the way around. Yeah, I want you to live. I want you to be healthy. I want you to feel good. I think that, it because I care about you. If I didn't care about you, then I would just be like, eat all the crap you want. Yeah. Hmm. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, is it really going to hurt you that much? Do you know what I'm saying? Spiritually, maybe. No, no. <laughs> You're rude, dude. It might hurt my spirit. You're rude. It might hurt my spirit, Jabes. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. Since we were talking about the Coke days and shit like that, let's kick this one back to Brando. 
That was the most demanding actor of all time. Oh, yes. Marlon Brando. Those were the days, That dude. guy was. Well, you know what? He was doing it since the 50s, though. He was like, doing it since the 50s, shit. but I don't think he wanted to do it, right? I think he got to a point when he didn't want to do it. And you know how, I mean, I think that's how I would be. I'd be like, if you want me to go out there, you're going to have to do, and you make these crazy demands, yeah. thinking they won't do it, and then they do it. He also did end up being very crazy and demanding, right? But in my mind, he wasn't <sighs> really into it. All he wanted to do was sit at home and eat and drink, right? Yeah. So if you're going to get me out of the house, yeah. you better be fucking. The one that I, I, I can't believe like that I have a problem with is The Godfather, where it's like, dude, that was you know one of the greatest movies of all time, uh -huh. honestly, that whole that series. Mm -hmm. And uh, he couldn't even be bothered for that. Because you know the reason why he was looking up in every scene is because his lines were taped on the ceiling. Dead serious. So if you can't get up for The Godfather as an actor, and that was what, 76 or 77 yeah. I think that movie came no, out. Oh, you're right. He was over it. He was over it in the 70s. And he kept he doing shit. He was a weird guy, the, man. He was one of those weird, super talented, insane people that we expect to just be fucking normal. Yeah. And it, he was so good. Yeah, but go, go back and watch that. The reason why he's looking up the entire time, That's crazy. it's not a character okay. thing. He had all of his lines taped in the ceiling because he was just like, eh, I can't fucking be bothered. Wow. Yeah, and it worked. Imagine being that good. You can tape your lines on the ceiling. And come That's up with what a, I'm saying. Come up with a character. That it's like, uh, he was that fucking good. It's amazing. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, fun, weird show again, Javes. These Friday afternoon ones, man. We just go down these weird fucking rabbit holes of, of nonsense. Of nonsense, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing political. No insy outsies with... Mm. Uh, the bullshit on a Friday afternoon. So nothing, nothing. No out. robots, no aliens, no, no we, sports. We talked about all of that. Gosh, we talked about all of that, didn't yeah, yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but that's normal stuff, right? I don't. Just, people just don't want politics jammed in their face. Yeah, no, that's true. So, uh, for Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is the Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.